Hey there. Good afternoon, morning, evening. Uh, welcome to 50 Question Friday for October 1st of 2021. And let's see. Just make sure you guys can hear me okay. That are on chat. If you're having a hard time hearing, please do let me know. Um, I seem to have misplaced my webcam, so I'm using the normal computer here this morning. Um, and as always, if you are here live, please do uh, drop in on the chat side. And um, we have some great people that always show up here that can also help to answer questions and share experiences and just chat. And then if you have questions, please do drop them on the questions tab. And hey, Nat, good to see you. Uh, Connie from Maine. So yeah, we usually have quite the quite the number of different beings throughout all over the world here. Hey, Samson. So anyway, um, we'll start as always by going into the heart space. Uh, California, Perth, Maine, awesome, Nebraska, South Dakota. All right, so we'll take our traditional three breaths, the Trinity breath. And so simply putting your attention onto your physical heart, closing your eyes if you wish, and imagining going heart to heart with the earth and breathing in that light of the earth up through the feet and into the heart. It's a good grounding breath. Next is connecting to the heart of creation, breathing in that light of creation into the heart. And that third breath of the Trinity breath is breathing in both that light of creation and that light of earth into the heart with the light of you. Then you become that calm of life that's grounded, connected, and in the heart space. Uh, and good morning from Lisbon and Washington State and Hawaii. Oh my goodness, Marie, we need to do some 50 questions Friday from Hawaii, I think. We'll wait till the snow flies here. All right, so um, don't have anything from the internet this morning from email for questions. So we'll start over here on the questions tab. And um, then at the end here, uh, we'd like to share some recent energetic happenings here um, at the end of our at the end of our workshop here today or at the end of our webinar uh, so Ying asks if I sit in a practitioner ring in a park will the ring neutralize the earth's natural EMF field which I intend to receive so know where the um, if you are intending to receive from the earth, and you are out on the earth itself and you are sitting in a ring, it will actually bring through so much more because um, it connects in with the heart of the earth. When you are sitting out on the ground with a ring and your intention is connecting to the earth, you are going to receive so much more um, sitting within that ring. Um, so the only thing that it will um, neutralize basically is simply anything like on the different geomagnetic lines or geopathic stress lines um, you know because there's a lot of different geomagnetic lines all over the planet there's the Hartman grid lines the Curry lines the you know all different geomagnetic lines and so basically when you're within that column of the ring the only thing that's going to be neutralized out of that is any of the non-beneficial energy and information that flows through those geomagnetic lines. Um, so really sitting within the ring is a fantastic thing to do. Um, so let's see. 
Uh, and then another question. The water trio rings can erase all memory and return water to its pristine state, correct? Yes, that's correct. So when you bring, when you put water within the ring, it is clearing the memory of the water because memory, because uh, water is like a crystal, you know, in a way that it can absorb the energy and information around it. And so the water that we get that's processed, you know, if it's been sitting in a cell tower where they sell, or sorry, a cell tower, a water tower where they sell airtime space on the water towers in most places anymore, where there's actually all the different um, Wi-Fi, well, they're more communication transmitters, um, cell towers they put on top of most water towers in municipalities anymore. Um, it's just a good airspace to, to rent. So, you know, all of that that goes into the water plus just the processing of the water, um, it, when, when you bring a tensor ring with that water, it will clear the memories of all of that. Um, it's bringing in more of the consciousness into the water. Um, so let's see, let me continue reading the question here too. If so, how do the rings allow for a new energy and frequency such as crystals placed inside the rings as frequencies carried by the rings to be imprinted in the water at the same time? So the, the rings are, when you place the rings around the water, it is bringing in the consciousness of water more. Um, you know, my sister Brenda channeled in the symbol of Hedica, the water elemental. And that's simply, um, it's simply a, a symbol of the consciousness of water. Um, so the consciousness of water is, comes through the tensor rings. So within the tensor rings is the frequencies and properties of all the plant, crystal, mineral kingdoms of the planet, as well as all the earth elementals, such as the, the fire, water, air, ether. All of that are within the tensor fields. So when you bring your water or your water-based drink and tea in with these tensor fields, it's bringing that consciousness of water. And then you can intend that it brings through whatever else it is that is in your highest and best. You know, uh, so if I need um, bergamot, I can just state that into my water within this field and that water will carry those frequencies and properties in the consciousness of that plant for me. Um, let me turn off my sound here in the background. All right. So um, when you so then if you are going to use like a larger ring and you place crystals, essential oils, um, intentions on paper, whatever it is that you place within that larger ring and you have your water sitting within it, it is creating, um, you know, like a space, a little sacred space right there for your water. And when you put your crystals or your essential oils or a plant or whatever within that ring, your intention already is to infuse those together with the water. So you don't have to actually, you know, make a hard intention, a conscious intention, because your intention is already there when you're placing the stone, the crystal, or whatever it is within that ring with the water, your intention is placed there. Um, so, you know, just make things easy that way. Um, so basically it's, um, so for the water too, it takes four to six hours for the physical restructuring of the water to occur, but it will clear that memory of the water instantly when it's within the tensor ring. And then it is going to carry those properties into the water within a few minutes. So you don't need to leave the, wa the, the water within the ring if you're just working with the energetics, the consciousness for more than just a few minutes. But for the physical restructuring, it does take four to six hours. Though I truly believe that with this alchemist set of rings that things can happen faster when you're using it with water. Uh, Alfredo, 
I got the best sleep ever after sleeping in the practitioner alchemy set last night. I woke up extremely hyper full of energy. I got a silver Gaia sphere as well and noticed a new unraveling of tension of tension bear my heart. What have you experienced with the new Gaia sphere? Um, so with this little silver Gaia sphere, um, gosh, you know, I have not sat with it alone and Brenda and I have not sat and done a reading on this either for this new silver Gaia sphere. Um, you know, I do know like when I wear it, so it's, so this is the alchemist set here as well. It has the divine I am Gaia sphere and the chalice and the harmonizer rings. So with that alchemist set using the Gaia sphere, well, just using the Gaia sphere alone is going to connect hearts. So it connects hearts with all of those around you within, you know, that two, two city block wide area. And of course it's also, you know, doing everything else like, like a tensor field generator would do the, um, electromagnetics, dense consciousness, all the fun stuff. But to me, it, it's very grounding. That's one thing I can say about the Silver Gaia Sphere and the Alchemist set. They're very grounding for me. They're bringing things more into the physical. They're allowing me to bring all that in, but in a physical, tangible way. You know, it anchors it into the physical. Um, but yes, I'm very glad to hear about your experience with sleeping with that... Um, practitioner alchemist set of rings because this alchemist set is pretty flipping phenomenal it, it really really is um so yeah alfredo i would i look forward to this winter when things slow down for both brenda um you know and i so that we can get together more and start doing some more readings on these newer tools because we just you know, we just haven't been able to get together very often. Well, let's see. So, Anna, even with several tools, energy seems to be a bit heavy and angry all around. Did you feel any change recently? Namely, I have the Divine I Am Generator, Alchemist, Golden Fire Generator, etc. Uh, so, yeah, Anna, that's something that I'm going to talk about in the energy updates of what's been going on in mass consciousness. Um, and it's been intense. Um, so we'll definitely talk about that here, here towards the end. Um, because it's, it's one of those crazy rabbit hole stories that <laughs> not everybody might not want to tune into. Um, but one of the things too is for some people with these tools, it's going to bring things up to the surface. For the majority of things, um, you know, having these divine I am tools like the divine I am generator, um, it is going to bring up and clear automatically the deepest soul level experiences that no longer service that are there on the surface um, that we're ready to release. So with that, there are still occasionally you'll still run into things that come into your awareness. Now, if any of that dark, heavy stuff comes into your awareness, go into the heart space, take those three breaths, go into the heart and simply let it go. You can do that with a breath. So you take your divine I am generator, you hold it in your hand, you are in the heart space, you have this in your awareness, something dense and heavy. And it's just a simple, it's kind of like a ceremony of just blowing into the generator and it's releasing. So it's just simply, and you just release. The simpler you can do that in the, and it's, the, and it's allow and allowing. And that's, you know, what I've really seen in the past three weeks is we unconsciously hold on to a lot of crap. And the clients that I've been working with for the past three, three to four weeks now, um, been playing with some different um, concepts, which I'll also talk about here at the end, to release. And um, so many of us hold on to these things, not knowing it. And it's the ego that holds on to these things that um, 
for soul growth learning for experience and it's 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 talking yourself into the allowing of the release of those so they're coming up when you notice in your awareness anything that's dark heavy it is there for you to recognize and to release um, and that divine i am generator should help a whole lot with that releasing uh, let's see and we're going back to the water again here um, if i placed imprinted water in a ring such as a chalice ring Will the ring erase the imprint? So basically within the, um, within the tensor fields, and especially like that chalice ring, when you bring water that is carrying beneficial frequencies, imprints, energy information, um, it's not going to erase that. The same with like a crystal, a crystal or water um, in that, it'll only clear out the things that are not in the highest and best. So when you're working with the rings and the water, it is your consciousness and it's the consciousness of the water that you are working together. And so it will only clear out that which is not for the highest and best as determined by your higher consciousness and the higher consciousness of water. Um, so, yeah, so if you have some really phenomenal water that you want to keep clean and clear, put it inside of that chalice ring, and that will hold the energetics of it in the highest and best. Uh, let's see. Does anything block the ring's energy? Any materials like wool or foil, magnets, magnets etc.? Does the field go f through walls, and how far do they go? So... No, there's actually no blocking the tensor fields. Um, the tensor fields are a quantum field, so they will travel through the air just as well as they travel through the earth, through walls, through lead. Um, the, the tensor fields are, um, they're just like a quantum field. So they don't, they're not bothered by the physical. Um, how far does the field go that's it kind of depends on the frequency of the ring as far as that physical area um, to give an example the golden fire generators will go out um, there's the two and a half inch one that goes out about two and a half miles across is its sphere of influence so it goes out about one and a quarter miles in all directions now the divine i am generator only goes out about a city block in all directions. <clears throat> so the divine I am, even though it's not traveling as far on the physical plane, on all the other planes, it is traveling deeper, farther, wider. And that is like through the soul aspects, through lifetimes, um, you know, through dimensional layers, all of that. The divine I am is working um, deeper and wider and higher than the golden fire is, where the golden fire has a larger sphere of influence here in the physical. Um, that's doing everything with like the electromagnetics and dense consciousness, um, you know, things like that. Um, so as far as working with magnets, though, um, there is something with magnets in the tensor fields that, and it's kind of like crystals too, that they seem to amplify each other. There, there's something, and I guess I really don't want to get into the magnets, magnets because I really don't know um, what exactly the magnet magnetic fields are doing with tensor rings. We've done the GDV photo imaging where it shows a movie of a of a magnet. A refrigerator magnet you can see the magnetic lines coming off of it and you put a tensor ring over it and all the magnetic lines just like disappear but then they'll arc over once in a while onto the copper which you know copper should not should not be um it's not magnetically charged i mean you cannot the magnetic line shouldn't arc over on the copper um so we really truly don't understand you know, the science behind working with magnets and the tensor fields. Um, but 
there's been a lot of people that have played with working with magnets and the tensor fields. And, you know, some people say that it makes things more potent, stronger. Um, so it's not going to do any harm in playing with that whole concept, uh, the magnets and tensor fields, that's for sure. Uh, let's see. The, a quantum grid point question. How far do they reach between them? Would four be enough to cover an acre property if placed on the four corners? Does more increase strength? So the quantum grid points will basically connect anywhere on the planet. Um, you know, and, and that's one of the things about the quantum grid points is that it, when you get one, there's a thousand points of light coming into that because there's a thousand grid points and ascension pyramids on the planet right now. Um, so we've made a lot. You know, I really don't know the exact number that we've made, and I'm guessing it's it's well over a thousand into the thousands. Um, so the quantum grid points, when you're creating a localized grid, um, which I mean, when you get the grid points and you have the intention of setting up your grid, you can make it as big as you want. Um, there's a gal that came through <clears throat> recently and she's taken the grid points all over the United States. And when she sets them, she has the intention that they connect and that they're creating that larger field. So the grid that she has created with her intention is almost as big as the United States. Um, and they hold that space just as well as within an acre. So you really only need that four, placing them on the four corners to cover that whole acre. And adding more grid points does not create, does not increase the potency. Um, you, you only really need the four to, to have the same potent of a field as if you used, you know, 30 of them. Uh, let's see question here as far as i know 7g is used on a military level would you consider an update to the third template of vehicles or do these tools do any automatic millimeter band clearing um so as far as the millimeter wave like the the 5g millimeter wave um i went downtown chicago in 2018 to do you know kind of a study on the 5g millimeter wave in the downtown area because in downtown Chicago is where, well, Chicago is where they released everything first during that Super Bowl, I believe, it, during the Super Bowl in 2018. And so with um, the millimeter wave, at first the Golden Fire tools were not able to work with that millimeter wave. Um, so we did do some adjustments to the Ethereum templates to where now then your Golden Fire generator and now then to define I am, are going to restructure. They're going to harmonize that 5G millimeter wave so that it is no longer harmful. Now, because the big 5G scare was, was all about, you know, that 5G millimeter wave. There was just so much unknown about it. Basically, the millimeter wave uh, of, you know, the 5G millimeter wave, the fifth generation, that millimeter wave can only travel like a couple hundred feet. It's in a straight line. It doesn't broadcast out um, just a straight line. It won't go through a piece of paper. It won't go through a window. It won't go through the leaves of a tree, um, but it's absorbed by those things. And so where we were having the issues with it was where an electrical grid, like in a home, would absorb that 5G millimeter wave and it would it would change like the frequencies within that electrical distribution. Um, so it can be carried that way a little bit farther, but um, yeah, so the, the golden fire and then subsequently the divine I am energetics are clearing that millimeter wave and harmonizing that into a more beneficial form. Um, well, let's see, Alan, I have, I would have liked to know if I make gold plated, the golden fire light wand or the divine I am Taurus will have an effect that accentuates the energetic effect of these tools. So yes, you can totally electroplate 
Um, and I'm not sure about with um, electroplating like one of the wands, the golden fire and light wand, because the golden fire and light wand doesn't put out a huge field around it. It's it's a smaller field that's that's around that wand. And so I'm not feeling that it would be that much more beneficial to gold plate, the electroplate, the, the brass wand. But as far as the tensor ring goes, um, you know, and of course that's something that Slim did um, all the time was that he was looking for a way to increase the potency of the rings by working with them through the physical means because he did not yet understand the authority templates. Um, pardon me, I have to get comfortable here. So with the um, electroplating, um, you cannot electroplate gold directly onto copper. There has to be, um, and so Slim, when he electroplated onto the copper, he would do silver first and then gold. Because when you electroplate gold right onto copper, um, the copper actually alchemizes the gold. <laughs> so instead of the gold alchemizing copper, it's copper that alchemizes the gold, which is a very interesting concept. I There's something to all that that I would love to learn more about. So when you electroplate onto copper, you have to have something underneath of it. So when Slim used to electroplate the copper, he would do nine layers. He would do the, the silver, the gold, silver, gold, silver, gold, silver, gold. Um, and so with that, it does bring through some different energetics. Um, and for us, I've just never really been drawn to, to do it that way. Um, you know, because for us, we're working with the etheric templates. So we're working with the energetics in a different way than working with them on the physical change in the energetics. So you can certainly electroplate any of the tools and it will change the energetics. Um, you could also consider just sitting a gold ring or a piece of gold on your Taurus because basically it would be the same concept. Instead of electroplating the entire ring, just put a piece of gold with it and see how that feels for you. Um, you know, and that might be a great way to find out what tools you really want to spend that extra to electroplate by simply using a piece of gold with that ring or with that Taurus. And you'll be able to tell by feeling it right there if that's, if that's something that's for you. Um, but it certainly doesn't affect, um, negatively affect the energetics at all. Uh, Connie, a report rather than a question. Here in Maine, some of us are working in our own ways to clear and clean the ocean in Frenchman's Bay. A psychic friend psychically viewed Frenchman's Bay and saw columns of light I anchored there. Uh, that's fantastic, Connie. Um, you know, it, it's always such great confirmations when we're able, when, you know, other people are able to see that energetic work that we do. Um, so that is super fantastic. Um, and I, I'm really happy that that happened because, you know, and that's the thing with the anchoring the columns of light is that, you know, once we, once our brain allows, you know, has that tangible effect for us, whether it's somebody else seeing it or else we feel it or else we know to change anything like that when we're doing the energy work, then it just allows us to be more, um, believing in the work that we do. And, um, so yeah, I, I'm very happy to hear that, that you had that confirmations with the anchors of light. Um, you know, cause it's fun. Um, you know, like years ago when everybody was so worried about Yellowstone and we'd go there, we could just see thousands of beings, humans and other beings holding space over Yellowstone. You know, so it's, it's, it's really fantastic when you can, you know, you or others can tune into those spaces and, and see that happening. Um, let's see, can I use a chalice ring to harmonize home appliances? Yes. Yes, you can. Um, to me, the chalice ring is almost working in a whole different way 
but yet the end results are going to be the same with electromagnetics and with water um, in the way that it harmonizes. Um, there's just something about the chalice energy that is pretty super special. Um, and so, yes, you can totally use that chalice energy to harmonize electromagnetic fields. Uh, Renard, hey there. Have you worked with our... Have you worked with or know of anyone who has worked with the rings and tuning forks? That's been my latest push of info coming into my field. So, yes, actually, my mom works with the tuning forks. Um, you know, she'll get them ringing and then she'll put the butt end, you know, onto the physical. And if you use a ring with that, it is allowing that sound wave to deeper, further penetrate into the body if you're using that, it that way. And otherwise, if you're just using the tuning fork and you are using it in a person's field, having a ring with it is going to do great things too because the, the tensor fields do something with sound. Um, people who can see the color of sound, it changes the color of sound. Um, this last weekend in Denver, we were, um, all my um, cohorts around me were buying these really phenomenal crystal singing bowls, you know, made with moldavites and gold and platinum and all this from, from a dealer there at the fair. And all these, and all my friends who were getting singing bowls, I had them come over to my table and they play their singing bowl. And then we put that home alchemist set underneath the singing bowl and everybody could feel that difference. Um, you know, using the alchemist rings with the singing bowl was pretty phenomenal. Um, but going back to the, the tuning forks, same concept is that the, the tensor fields are going to allow that sound wave to permeate more in and it's basically using that sound wave as a carrier wave to bring the energetics of the ring to the physical um, so using any kind of sound uh, with with the tensor rings any kind of sound light frequency is phenomenal um, so just figuring out how to to use your tuning forks like i say um, you know, you, if you're putting that butt end of the tuning fork onto the physical, just hold a ring where you place in the tuning fork and see how that feels. And, you know, and play with that with people too. You know, maybe somewhere on the back where you're working, you know, hold a ring there when you place in your tuning fork and see if they can feel that difference with the ring and without the ring. Let's see. I got some other tensor rings and items from someone else before I found you guys. Can I add any of the energetics, any of the energies you guys are using, or how do you create a template so I can increase their energy? Um, so the majority of tool makers do not use etheric templates. The majority of tensor rings that are being created right now um, are just tensor fields which are fantastic tensor fields do restructuring of water of electromagnetics they harmonize fields but i always say that the true power and potency of these tools are in their etheric templates um, if they already have etheric templates then there's not much you can really do to add to them because they're connected to that tool makers of three templates. Um, and again, very rarely do we find that there are three templates in people's tools. Um, so if you just have like a basic ring, like let's say even if you just made a basic ring, um, what I would do is, what I would suggest is to go into the heart space. And so even if it is connected to their etheric templates, you're the owner of that tool and you can do whatever you wish with that. Um, you can go into the heart space and ask that that tool is connected to our etheric templates. We have a guardian to the etheric templates. His name is Heimdall. You can certainly step into the heart and ask that your tools 
are connected to the etheric templates of our tools or that the upgrades are brought into your tools. Um, I feel that you can make that happen. So um, again, just go into the heart space, hold your tools. You can ask me or you can ask Heimdall because you, you can ask me too. And you can ask Brenda energetically, our souls to step in and assist in anchoring in those energetics into the tools. Let's see, tensor rings create a paramagnetic field of their own, correct? Yes, uh, they do create a paramagnetic field. They're also creating as far, they're also creating a piezoelectric field. Now the gentleman who, and, and I'm not, and I don't know enough about the paramagnetics. All I know is that there are people who are well-versed in paramagnetics who uh, worked with SLIM um, and the gals at Dancing with Water and say there are paramagnetic properties to the tensor rings. Now, I do know that the piezoelectric properties that the gentleman who discovered piezoelectrics and the testing of them tested the tensor rings and said that it contains the highest amount of piezoelectric out of anything he's ever tested. Um, and I really don't know the difference between the two anymore, the paramagnetic and the piezoelectric. Sorry, I used to know quite a bit more on the science side because when we first started this, it was all, you know, I came from a science right brain and I was very much trying to prove everything through the scientific method and in ways that, um, you know, people would trust the tools and the science behind them and trying to prove things in a science way. And I don't do that anymore. And um, so, and of course, all that stuff that I learned, including 20 years of college, you just kind of, you know, I don't retain hardly any of that anymore. Um, so sorry, I don't have much answers on the paramagnetic. Um, I would look up under, you know, maybe there might be some information in Slim Sperling's universe, his book that Cal Garrison wrote. Um, either that or else maybe check the Dancing with Water website is where I feel would be the best place to go is to go to dancingwithwater.com and and ask about the paramagnetics there um, in, the, in the search bar. Let's see. I've read one of the reviews that someone has been putting the everything ring around the wings of talk. What do you know or think about doing this? Um, you know, there's a lot of people who are using that everything ring um, to really amplify the tools. Now, so, you know, I always suggest to experiment and to play with these tools because some fields are, you know, we all perceive the fields a little bit differently. And then the ones that we resonate with are a little bit more individual, like when we start playing with the different fields. Um, a lot of us can feel as we start to put tools together that there's a, a huge shift in there in the power potency, what it's doing, how it's flowing. Um, and so it kind of goes back to an individual, um, you know, to an individual's needs, perceptions on what tools to work with in that way. Um, you know, cause I know a lot of people who just love the everything ring and I did too, for the first couple of months, I don't, you know, I, I not, it's, it's not one that I work with anymore, <clears throat> but, um, you know, I still know a lot of people who are using that and are finding some pretty phenomenal results. And then actually, you know, I've been recommending the everything ring recently to people doing radionics. That's just been the one that's been coming up a lot recently too. Uh, JR, is the harmonizer nine and a half ring okay to put under a singing bowl too, or any ring would work? Yes, totally. You can use that nine and a half inch harmonizer ring. Um, you know, basically you can use any of the tensor rings under a singing bowl. Um, you know, it used to be the 333 megahertz was 
was one of the ones that we were using for singing bowls a lot because that one was like my my crystal singing bowl that's um people could see the color of sound is pink we use a 333 ring and it would change it to purple um and i was trying to think we had some other rings that were that we were comparing to it but you know any of the newer rings like the harmony ring on um you know totally are going to have a little bit different vibe with each but are all going to be working with that sound um so yeah i would totally try that nine and a half inch harmonizer ring and uh and again just play the bowl without it and play the bowl with it and you know even get people involved and 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 see if people notice that difference in the sound uh, let's see on sound info does it also work with stereo systems or boom boxes yes so there is um there's a gentleman who buys a lot of shaman wands from us he is very um i'm trying to think of the scientific words it's like synthesia um that he is he is very in tune to sound now when he uses the shaman's wand on a stereo equipment or on the speakers i think he mainly uses on the stereo equipment it's like he you know he's talked about it before to me about how he can like feel the singer being right there and it's like you 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 feel the emotions you it's it's like you are right there with the singer um and then then he also talks about how you know the drummer is just right there that it is it's bringing everything um it's almost like the consciousness of it is all coming through of the music of the beings that are creating the music um so working with the the rings on the stereo equipment yes um so for that gentleman who is so in tune with the music that's what he does is he uses it on the equipment itself now when we first started doing it and using it with the equipment i'd always put it around a speaker and that's where i always felt to use it was with the actual sound wave but this gentleman is using it with the entire electronic aspect before it comes out of the sound wave um so yes definitely a, a, just another one to play with um whether you're playing with the electronic aspect of it or whether you're playing with the actual sound wave aspect of it let's see i recently got a fairy wand and i felt a really strong connection to it before it arrived when I, when it arrived i connected again but it told me he didn't want to be worn but rather wanted to be put in a special bowl i have I was a little surprised any thoughts <laughs> yeah you know the the fairy wand well a lot of the tools it's like it's like they it's like they have a mind of their own sometimes but especially the fairy wands because they connect to in the dragon wands um especially the older dragon wands connect to you know it's almost like they're connecting to more specific beings that come in um you know and and victoria with with your fairy wand and you'd and you'd like to wear it i would just have a discussion with it and say you know hey can you can we hold space here in this space with it but can we also utilize it in another way too um perhaps by allowing some other being that is in my highest and best and in you know for me to step in and utilize it for me to wear you know have the conversation with it um and yeah that, that that's what i would do is i would just have the conversation with the fairy wand and you know and that fay that is there with it and um you know because they gotta share <laughs> for sure all right so just jumping back over here to the chat to see what's all going on over here hey valerie um judy love my silver sphere now my favorite tool that's awesome um 
Oh, cool. And Anna had a great story that she had sent. She was just saying that she, that Brenda confirmed the clearing and anchoring done with a divine I am generator in a temple that she mentioned a while back. Really phenomenal story there that Anna shared about um, working in a temple that the divine I am generator just came in and basically did the work automatically. Let's see. And then Anna also says that, um, that she's always has the wings to talk and everything ring combined. That's, that's fantastic. And that's good confirmation too. Um, Kendall, my dragon wand's been over my bed for months. It just seemed right. <laughs> yes, for sure. Yeah, and that's it. It's just in you know, just intuitively using the tools, you know, how you feel at, at any given time. Uh, let's see. In a question, place a chalice ring on one faucet will harmonize all water lines to all rooms in the house. Correct. So, um. Using a tensor ring on a water faucet. Now, to me, when I've used a, um, you know, the Wi-Fi ring, the Golden Fire ring was the first one that I was really using on the faucet where it was basically when you have running water that goes through a ring, it's going to clear the energetics of the water. But it's not going to, again, do that physical restructuring of the water unless the water is held in there for the four to six hours. A little bit less with the Alchemist set. But um, as far as working with the water, um, it's an intention. So I think I even did a video a few years ago about putting a ring over a faucet and having going into the heart, having the visualization intention of that energetics of the ring, following the water all the way back to the water tank, to that source and working with the water there. So basically it becomes a tool of attention and intention. So it is the consciousness. It is you that is doing the work of sending that energy back through the water through the water lines to to the a source of the water. So putting the ring onto the water lines, to me, I don't feel is doing it automatically, that you need to have your intention and visualization for that to happen. Um, so, you know, that's, okay, so what I would do is I would put that chalice ring onto your faucet going into the heart space and visualizing and intending that going all the way back through the lines to the holding tank and then imagining that large chalice ring over that water tower or the water tank. Imagine that being there creating that column of light of that chalice energy going into the heart of the earth and the heart of creation kind of like we do the Trinity breath and anchor that column of light right there over that water tank. That's, yeah, to me, that's would be the best way to do it is to, again, just imagine that ring over the water tank, seeing that column of light doing the Trinity breath right there. And just imagining that the earth and creation and you are all holding that chalice energetics right there in that water tank. Um, should a ring be placed over a sewer line, like where the cap is on the ground? Will it block any energy? Will it block any energies from there, or do you have generators to do what you need to do? So, um, you know, you can totally use a a ring with your septic tank. You know, with your septic tank is a great thing because it is going to to me, it's going to allow the beneficial bacteria to thrive better, um, you know, because that would be the intention if you have a septic tank and you put a ring over it um, to, to make that more beneficial, to bring in that bacteria that septic tanks use 
to to clear that water. Um, as far as just using it on a sewer line, um, you know, and and so then the question is also about the tensor field generators. Now, the tensor field generators, where they are creating that sunshine effect, and they go into the earth, and they go, you know, they just sunshine out. Kind of think of it as a tensor ring is a really, um, it's a condensed light. It's it's just a solid beam. When you put it into a generator, it takes that solid beam and kind of unfocuses it and makes it more like a like a sun. But that sunshine out is not as a compact of a beam of light as what's in a ring. So even though your generator that you have sitting in your home is going to be working with the earth, with the um, water in the ground, things like that, um, it's something that will work more over time, I feel, versus having a ring that is just just shining in there um, full force. I hope that kind of answers the question. Um, let's see. And and I'm just going over here to the chat side to read what Valerie wrote. Um, so she said that, um, so Valerie had told me that she started sleeping with the Divine I Am pendant. This one here. The Divine I Am Sphere, the Tensor Field Generator, and the Quantum Healer. And I sleep so well, I've made it a habit to sleep with him every night. I've also been using the Quantum quantum Healer to clear the denseness and pain in my body from sitting all day at my full-time job. While staying hydrated and, do that, and doing that and being more mobile, I'm feeling better and better. That's fantastic. You know, yeah, the Quantum Healer, there's been a lot of us who know that... Um, sleeping with it is pretty fantastic so the quantum healers are a hard great tool to sleep with as are any of these tools you know and, and yeah valerie got one of the first divine i am activator pendants that we had out so always happy to see people who are attracted to these and get these um because yeah it, it's an investment but man it's it's a big deal um Let's see. So let me go back here um, on questions. Uh, based on previous questions, if I place a generator next to the Wi-Fi router in the house, do I still need to place a Wi-Fi ring on the router to harmonize the router? No, you sure don't. Um, you know, so like with the tensor field generators, when you place them in your home, it's basically covering everything that is free floating through the air. Now, if you are like next to 18 inches, to, well, it used to be 18 inches, 36 inches from your Wi-Fi router, maybe even four feet on these newer Wi-Fi routers, um, if you're within that immediate field of the Wi-Fi router, it's like the tensor field generator doesn't have that opportunity to clear this field. And so if you are spending time really close to your Wi-Fi router, yes, putting that tensor field generator between you and the router is absolutely perfect. Um, or if you feel to just put the generator on top of the router, even if you don't spend time there, it's, it's going to clear and it's going to harmonize and basically change those, those frequencies, those, um, the Wi-Fi transmissions, it'll turn that into a harmonized carrier wave for that energy. So it's kind of like when you use a cell phone tab on your cell phone, you're changing the energetics of the cell phone. So your cell phone itself is producing a harmonized field. Um, and then too, with like the um, breaker boxes, your electrical panels where they produce that field that's five and a half to six feet out. Um, if you have a generator, you know, somewhere in your house, but you're still sleeping right there within that five and a half to six feet. We usually suggest putting um, a disc into, you know, on that panel or in the plug-in, or else you can totally put that generator between you and that in that um, electrical panel, and that's going to clear that. Uh, let's see. I have a Golden Fire Harmony Regeneration and Divine I Am generators and to put one in my fridge to change my food, as you said, the closer the better. 
which would you suggest? You know, the harmony is what comes up first to me, um, is using the harmony. Um, I, you know, there's something about that harmony that is working with, you know, the, the consciousness of the plants of the, you know, of, of the ingredients that go into, into the food. Um, so to me, I, I feel the harmony generator would be the best one to put in close to the food. All right. So, um, let's see if we don't have any more questions and actually, um, I'm just going to move on here. So I guess if we might be done with the questions here today and I won't be here next Friday. Um, let's see this weekend. We're in Gillette, Wyoming as show next weekend. Um, there's a crew, um, Jennifer and Mary are going to be in Sioux Falls, South Dakota to show, but next weekend I'll be in Colorado Springs at that three day body, mind, spirit um, expo in Colorado Springs, Colorado. And so that one is starts on Friday. So I won't be here for 50 questions Friday next week, the following week I will be. So, um, I just want to give a little bit of a, the, the energetic update. Um, and for anybody who's not really into, um, you know, the, the really woo woo side of things of like, you know, ghost attachments and entities and crazy cosmic work. Um, you know, this might not appeal to you. So that's where we're going now is into story time. Um, basically. So, I just want to share some some energetic things that have been going on in mass consciousness over the past couple of weeks. And so, um, if you know if you're not interested in that kind of thing, that's that's where we're going now. So, um, all right. So, <sighs> hey, wait, one more quick thing before anybody does check out. I have the SETI coil today that I want to show. I've been wanting to show the SETI coil for quite some time. So. SETI is a, okay, so let me take a step back. Had some folks visiting the studio here uh, several years ago, and she was making chocolates, and she was using the tensor rings and the Hedica to charge, you know, supercharge her chocolates and that whole process. So they stopped by here at the studio, and um, this gentleman, he channels, um, Oh gosh, and I always forget the name. He channels the scientist, the Lemurian scientist, who's helping him do all these wild math equations, like with vortex math and stuff. And so um, he's channeling that 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 being that that scientist from Atlantis. Now there's another being called SETI, C E T E E, and not like SETI, S E T I, which is like the the UFO thing. Um, so SETI is this Atlantean scientist who asked my friend to ask me to make him what he calls the SETI coil. Um, has little antennas in here. This one has the eight rings, but we need to make a nine ring for him. Um, this was the original thing that was channeled through and you put a crystal in here and this creates a, a field about 1800 miles wide and it's working with the consciousness of the crystal. Um, has many uses, but here's a piece of pink danberite. And for those of you who are energetically sensitive, I've never put this pink danberite in here before. So let's check it out just to see if you can feel it. So all the different crystals, it's like it comes through and different ways in waves. Um, it was basically intended that this device was a way for a person who usually is not able to connect with crystals to receive the energy and the information and more of a, of a visual patterning of, of the crystal. Um, but playing with it in person is pretty phenomenal. So I've been taking it around to the holistic fairs for the past few weeks and letting people play with it and put their crystals in there. And 
this last week at the Denver show, boy, we had some fun because there were some amazing crystal beans there. Um, so anyway, yeah, <laughs> yeah, man, that is kind of intense, huh? Um, so it just amplifies, you know, the energetics of the crystal. Okay. Now we're going to move on to story time. So it was, um, there's just been really strange things happening over the past couple of weeks. Um, last weekend at the fair in Denver, I woke up Friday morning and I had such, I thought it was the ego talking such negative talk, you know, and it was, it was bad. And I was like, what the hell? You know, I, th I thought we, I thought we made peace here. And why is my ego so in here? And I'm, I feel all these emotions and all of this stuff. And so I, so I called Brendan and I was like, okay, what's going on? And, um, it was, Brenda thought it was a wayward, a ghost attachment, but it didn't really feel like a ghost because they come in and they can, you know, that's what they do is they, they, um, they affect your emotions, um, your thoughts, um, makes, it's almost like the ego going wild, but I haven't had a ghost attachment in years. And I was like, well, what the hell? And so as I was standing out in the parking lot and we were doing this work, I saw this giant river of sorts. It looked like it was a mass consciousness. It was the giant river, but yet there was all these, it was like dark, but there was all these golden specks all throughout it. And then as it got closer to look at it, it's like there was all these faces. There was just all these, faces that were and they were human and energies that were in this giant river and we we're like well what the heck and so we we're like okay well maybe it's a good thing because it seems to be siphoning off crap from the planet dense consciousness so we brought in some help just to hold light in there and you know we helped to so it felt like some of these were like waywards, and so we helped a few of these cross over. Um, and then we were like, so then we left it. And then um, the next morning I wake up, Saturday morning, this last Saturday in Denver at the Holistic Fair. Holy crap, I have never been so bad off. I mean, I was just angry. I couldn't connect. Um, it was intense. And um, I couldn't function. And Brenda was out running cows, you know, because um, weaning, uh, it's season to wean calves here. And so she was out running cows. And so she had um, our friend Julie, Brenda's, Brenda's path partner friend, Julie, come in and clear that. And Julie said, yeah, that wasn't an entity and it wasn't a ghost. Don't know what it was. And then Brenda also had this. So she had something come in that was influencing her and she didn't realize it until she started to cuss. And she's like, I don't say those words. And that's when she found it. But again, it was not like an entity attachment and it wasn't like a wayward, a ghost. It was something like in between those. Well, that was, well, that was a week ago. Um, that this happened and we've been trying to get together all week and um, a couple of days ago we stepped in because there was just something going on you know just really intense energetic physical pains so we've been doing this long enough we can tell what is a physical pain you know from like overworking whatever and what's an energetic pain man my left shoulder was knocked out hardcore last weekend I even saw my chiropractor and he, he almost squirmed <laughs> when he was checking my shoulder and seeing how bad out it was. Um, and he had to push it back into place. Um, and it was an energetic thing. Um, and then Brenda was getting nailed. She was like, she's like, man, it's almost like siphoning my energy out of me. Um, so finally, uh, 
gosh, what was it? Two days ago, we started working on it and we were just bringing in, um, we were working on this giant river that seemed to be connected into mass consciousness. And we knew that that was what is causing all this, you know, a lot of this chaos going on and a lot of things that are happening to people right now. And um, so we were trying to clear it and we just weren't able to get there before we had to part ways. So we kind of put it on freeze frame. But then yesterday, last evening, we we were working on it. And, you know, usually Brendan and I don't have to work on things for very long. We were doing this for an hour and a half last night from 7.30 until 9 o'clock Mountain Time last night. But what we did was we we found this, like, river of, of stuff. And my theory on what it is, we cleared it after this time. But my theory on it was, is that, and it goes in line with the work that I've been doing here the past three weeks too, is, is that taking the experience of a soul, so taking a soul and its incarnation, and its incarnations throughout this universe in duality, as the soul is here to experience. That's what the soul is here for. Its incarnations are to experience. And the whole idea is to change that experience, to distill the light and information out of those lifetimes of experience and bring it into wisdom. And then that wisdom is a part of the soul's light that comes into the human and the here and now. So when I'm doing sessions at, um, at the fairs underneath the pyramids that I'm doing these sessions now, that's what I'm doing is I'm walking a person into allowing the release of all of these experiences and allowing the soul to distill the light and information and turn that into wisdom, which then that comes in as a little particle of light. And then as we are holding more of our soul's light, our soul's wisdom, it's huge. This is a big deal. So that day that I saw that river, I was in tears um, because to me, it felt like something was taken away people's experience their lifetimes of experiences that were not going to be turned into wisdom and i was in tears of, of remorse of sadness because it just felt like souls were losing out on the wisdom that they were working to create in this universe and it's kind of like what was happening. So basically there was um, whatever this giant river was, it was like it was consciousness. It was this giant consciousness that was basically coming in and feeding off of the things in mass consciousness, all the dark stuff that people will not, that people would not allow, allow in. It's like you deny the dark. Um, so as a soul, we incarnate on the end of this universe and onto this planet to have these experiences, the good, the bad, the ugly, the beautiful, the dark and the light. The soul doesn't care. The soul is here for experience. It doesn't matter dark light in between. It's not a part of the soul concept. The concept is experience. And so the human, and this was all connected to humanity, basically we're like no you know that's <clears throat> that was a really dark lifetime you know i i'm i'm not accepting that into my experience you know they deny the deny those experiences deny that dark and it's an unconscious thing that we do it's actually the ego that is a part of that that chooses what holds on what it will allow the soul to transform into wisdom so when i do these sessions it's talking to the ego a lot and getting the ego to release, to allow the soul to turn that into wisdom. Um, so that's what this giant river was. There's this consciousness that was feeding on all the things that humans were denying of the dark. And so we, we set up things to basically where it shifted all that. It allowed humanity who... Um, who this was in that field that was being um, siphoned off of the collective consciousness 
um, it allowed all the souls to come in and distill that light and information and turn that all into wisdom. And that was huge. It, it was it was a it was a it was a big shift. And you know, Brendan and I were joking. We were like, "Well, God, wouldn't it be cool to wake up tomorrow and the whole world is changed and there's not all the you know all the craziness and the fear and all the stuff that's just running rampant right now." Um, and you know. I feel like there was some shifts already just by looking at the Facebook news feed this morning. Things looked a lot brighter. Um, but um, so, yeah. And then, yeah, that was, that was the work that we did last night. And because so many people have been having these entity attachments and these wayward attachments over the past couple of weeks. And so we're hoping that this is cleared a lot of that out so that um you know so we're not having to deal with that anymore because they affect people so much so one of the ways that we were able to do this is with that chalice energy this chalice energy is so here to help now the only way that i got relief over the weekend before this was cleared and this whole last week was i was wearing that chalice ring that um what is that the eight and a half inch or whatever chalice ring it barely fits over my head so that chalice home ring you know i kind of have to squeeze it and pull it down over my head and i was just wearing it around my neck that is the only way that i was able to get relief for this past week was to stay directly in that chalice energy and so it's the chalice energy that we use to to clear that and it's what i use in the sessions to have the soul you know bring all of that experience into wisdom. So for you, if you have the things that come up, the dark, the heavy, the um, things that come into your awareness that are dark and heavy and funky, bring in that chalice energy. You don't have to have a tool to do this. Um, I think if you look back on the 50 questions Fridays, you'll find, and there might even be another video because we have all the 50 questions Fridays. There's, um, you can look under there to find out about the chalice because we did an attunement to it a few different times of this chalice energy. So find where we did the attunement or if you remember how to do that, it's just simply going into the heart space, asking your soul to bring in that energy of the chalice, that your body becomes the chalice, that you are holding that crystal clear, pure consciousness light. And as you do, ask your soul to come in more fully as your soul comes in and you release and that's the other part of this is that you have to be willing to let go of the things that no longer serve you the things that you are unconsciously holding on to it's simply it, it's all about surrender surrendering to the soul but you can just have that intention you know even voice out loud i release all that no longer serves me i allow my soul to turn all experience into wisdom that's all you need to really say go into the heart space ask the soul to bring in that energy of the chalice have the intention of releasing all that no longer serves asking the soul to turn all experience into wisdom when you do that you should notice that anything that was that dark that heavy it dissolves away especially as you're bringing in more of your soul's light and then as that's happening and you feel the tangles in your body and you feel those vibrations raising within your being, that is your soul's light stepping more in. Then imagine your soul's light inhabiting every cell of your body, your soul inhabiting your body more fully. When your soul's light is inhabiting your body more fully, you become more and more above, beyond, transforming all of that stuff you are a huge transformer um so anyway play with this concept and at some point in time i'm totally going to make that video on how to do this or walk you guys through this process it's just that right now is still a trial and error because i've ran hundreds of people through this over the past three weeks at, at the events um in some people, it's just, it happens quick, easy, and it's done. 
for some people you have to talk the ego into allowing and i even have you know there's even been one or two people that they're just so ingrained into what they feel their path is and they call it their soul mission it's not a soul mission the soul is here incarnating for experience the soul does not have a mission it is that structure that soul level structure of the ego through eons and so when people feel oh it's my soul mission no it's not it is your ego it is your ego that feels like it has its soul mission its path its purpose which it did and that's the beautiful thing is that the ego is a beautiful thing and it has been here and in its missions and its purposes were phenomenal. They brought through all the wonderful experience to bring us to this here and now moment. But we need to shift. That's where my big deep dark night of the soul came in a year ago, last September. That time that, you know, when I was growing hair over this past, you know, winter and summer is because when I came in, um, well, anyway, probably you guys a lot of you know that story where i had all the stitches in the back of my head i had my spiritual two by four um basically it was a year ago september that basically all of the stuff that i have done for eons that i thought was my sole purpose you know the the being the big spiritual warrior and all that stuff out in the cosmos that all disappeared um i i my job was done and so it was my ego that was very much there that was like, okay, you know, this has been my, my purpose. And so now what's my purpose? And so that led me into a deep dive for nine months. And, and then as I've been coming out of, you know, as I came out of it and, um, stepping into whatever this path purpose is, and it's not even a path purpose. It's just a being as far as the ego is concerned. It's just being, um, you know, it was kind of fun though yesterday or last night where we got to do that that big work again you know that, that was fun you know because it's something that the ego has always loved to do but it's not not what i'm here for um i'm just here to be as are we all so anyway soapbox i'll get off of it but it's um so much is in the surrender the surrender to the soul and asking the ego to also surrender to the soul and knowing that a lot of those things that we feel are our soul's purpose is just the ego you got to love it and that's how you do it is you got to love it um and ask it to step forward with us on this new path this new path of creation um and and then usually the ego is like okay yep i'm on board i'm on board for this new creation and it releases and then once it releases you have that chalice energy there and you're asking your soul to distill that experiences that the ego holds on holds on to so tight asking the soul to distill that into wisdom and you'll feel that light coming in more and then it's the soul body fusion it's asking the soul to stay present in your physical being so anyway with that you guys um yeah happy distilling of your lights and i hope that you all step into all this beautiful wonderful higher wisdom and be healthy wealthy and wise um so yeah i will see you all in like two weeks then um yeah happy october 1st later